Welcome to the final episode of a Christmas belonging series, everyone. Oh, that makes me kind of sad to say, actually. I like, know. Oh, like, could we... <laughs> Can we more have more? I know, it's so Please, fun. Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> it's Christmas this week, and we are really excited to be wrapping up this series so close to the holidays. Mm -hmm. Even if we aren't excited to be wrapping it up, we are very impressed with ourselves and our timing. And I love the uh, the the nice wrapping holiday uh, present pun. Metaphor thing. Yes, metaphor yeah. thing. <laughs> yes, words. <laughs> Words. We have them. <laughs> no, we've used up our yearly allotment. <laughs> I know. Um, before we get to our wonderful discussion with much improved audio quality over the last two episodes, Ooh. first, our announcements. Yeah. So, first up, I would like to point out that the Audioverse Awards have begun the voting process for the finalists that were just announced this last weekend. Uh, one thing I am very excited about is A Horror Borealis Presents Losers, A Love Story is up for multiple categories, including Best New Improvised Production, Best Player Direction in a New Production, and Best Players in a New Improvised Production. Uh, you can also find entries for Campaign Skyjacks and Courier's Call on there. So it would be really great if you could head on over to the voting page and give your favorite one shot network shows some support and vote for them. Speaking of the one shot podcast network, if you like what the network is doing, or even if it's just what we're doing on the show, because we're on the network, you can head over to the one shot Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast and consider contributing if you are able to. If you join at the $5 or higher level, you'll get access to the One Shot Network secret archive with all sorts of goodies that the various shows are contributing to it. Uh, we have a few great episodes in there already. They are a lot more laid back, uh, believe it or not. Yeah. And we're able to actually play some of the games we cover, kind of. Um, usually quick versions. I won't mm. promise like a full uh, soundscaped AP the way Ryan does with some of the other ones he works with. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. That's okay. <laughs> One someday, maybe. Someday. <laughs> or or hear me out. No. <laughs> or maybe maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and we're getting ready to record some more of those. So you could be getting a monthly bonus episode from us uh, starting after the holidays this year, if that's something you're interested in. Yeah. I will also say that supporting the Patreon does, in fact, support our show as well. Mm -hmm. um, the network pays for things like our hosting fees. Um, they paid for our original logo art. Yeah. Um, when we are in need of new equipment, like if our microphone is going to start falling apart pretty soon, uh, the network does provide some of that. So yeah. um, it does it does directly help us as well. Mm -hmm. So we would I'm appreciate it if you're able to. Very excited. There is a new microphone on the way for Amelia no. <laughs> right now. And I am chomping at the bit to get at that audio. I know. I'm really <laughs> excited about it because this is still the original one I started with. And it's it's worked great for me. Yeah. Um, but we've definitely seen over the last like couple months, we've had a number of like annoying technical issues mm -hmm. um, with it being finicky. And luckily, we've only had one time where the audio was the real problem. Exactly. But, um, yeah, it's time. It's, it's time. It's time. And you know so, what? I, th I think it's going to help out a lot. And I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what it sounds like. So, yes. So thank you, One Shot Network Patreons, for making that happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, for now, let's hop back into this extra holiday flavored discussion. Then stick around for the call to action. Uh, a little year end recap of our thoughts and the outtakes after the show. I don't think there are any outtakes for this one. I think that we were amazing and perfect. Sure. Yeah, talk about. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome back to our discussion episode. Last time we finished our session zero for A Christmas Belonging. This episode, we will be discussing the character creation process. 
We are thrilled to welcome back Danny from the Pot of Wonder podcast and the designer of this game. Do you want to reintroduce yourself for everyone and tell us a little bit about the character you made? Sure. Hi, I am Danny. Any pronouns are fine. Uh, I am a game designer and podcaster from Philadelphia. I made this game and the character I made is Summers... Sorry, Summers... Singular. Summer Worthington the Fourth. Uh, she's the boss from the big city. She she does real estate and land development and business things, and <laughs> she, she has come to she has come to this small town in order to uh, try and build a wind farm. Mm-hmm. Ryan, why don't you tell us about your character? All right, so I am making Rick Newcomb, uh, who is uh, from the future. Uh, about 60 years from the future, uh, has come back to the past to uh, try to fix things uh, in more ways than one. Uh, (laughs) He is trying to get his uh, grandparents together. Uh, One of them, uh, or his parents together, one of them is Summer. Um, And the other is uh, your character, Amelia. Yes, I made Maribel Winters. Um, who is an event planner originally from Goldpind, <laughs> um, but was living in the big city of Cityopolis, as I keep calling it, um, yep. and is back in Goldpind to plan their big event of the Winter Honey Festival. Absolutely. Uh, and we actually created the town of Goldpind together. Mm-hmm. Um, which is uh, surrounding Lake Goldfund as mm-hmm. well, uh, mm-hmm. which is so much. <laughs> it's it's not a pond. It's not a pond. It's not, a pond. No, and it's it's not a pronounced gold pond. Yeah, you don't well, need pond. It's it's a lake. It's fine. And summer, you know, not being from here, keeps pronouncing it gold pond. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh no. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, there's hibernate is our uh, our town mascot, uh, and it, mm-hmm. it's all sorts of a uh, lot of fun honey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah Cyber Nate, our internet cafe. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the the bear in the bee suit mascot. Yeah. Yeah, we, we went we went all in on the bear uh, on the yeah. honey and we bear. We really things. did. Yeah. It started I mean, out really small, yeah. but you you pick one important detail and it it grows so much more. That's the thing it's I love true. about like collaborative world building though, is that you start with that one one tiny thing that doesn't really matter much and then uh-huh. like it just sort of escalates yeah. from there. Like, like, what if we lean into that one thing really hard? And we really, really did. And, and now everything else is about that one thing. Well, uh, let's go ahead and dive right into a segment we are calling a D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. In this segment, we like to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process and how it relates to this system and to other games. But first, the cliche question that we like to get out of the way Danny, tell us about how you ended up here in RPGs. Huh. Well, my experience with RPGs uh, dates back to the old computer game Baldur's Gate. Mm. Uh, a My sister's boyfriend tried to get her to play it, and, and she didn't really enjoy it, but I really enjoyed it. And I was telling a friend about it. And it was like, oh, yeah, that's Dungeons and Dragons. And there's the whole tabletop thing built around that. And you can just do whatever you want in it. And I'm like, go on. And discuss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. Um, so we, we played a, a few games where, you know, we didn't really know what we were doing. And the books were long and boring. So it mm-hmm. was like, roll a high number and you did the thing. Mm. But uh, his parents were... Uh, kind of weirdly Christian at where there was like a, a, a satanic panic moment where they threw out all the books and stuff. Oh no. Um, and, and so I was kind of playing in a, a few more games off and on uh, during college, but it wasn't until around maybe like 2015, I think where I got a job that let me listen to podcasts all day. And I found the one shot podcast nice. and, you know, I, I discovered that, listening to other people playing role-playing games was a thing and there's a ton of other rpgs out there and so you know i started you know listening to podcasts and collecting more games that i could ever play and starting to make my own games that i could never play and and also starting a podcast and now i'm here 
That's absolutely. That's a great journey, though. That's like I think I am so grateful for gaming podcasts mm. um, for dragging me back into this hobby because it was something mm. that I had done, and I kind of like you know then I took that sort of time off and then was vaguely still aware that like that was a thing that people did and like oh I remember that fondly but you know that's mm -hmm. for other people now um yeah. and then getting to listen to podcasts and being like oh there's lots of these games and lots of people playing them and just getting connected to that community too and you know then finding people to play with and yeah just sort of like rekindling that that joy um mm -hmm. is it's well, obviously for me now at this point, been life changing, yeah. um, mm -hmm. but so good. So good. Absolutely. So uh, what do you look for in a system as far as character creation? Like what pieces need to be there for great characters to happen for you? Um, so from a like a, a gameplay standpoint, I like for uh, character creation to kind of prepare me for what's going to be happening in the rest of the game. Like whether that's uh, like picking a bunch of skills or like what character creation tells you about the system, whether there's like there's rules for combat or like rules for like exploration. Like I I want character creation to kind of let me know what the game is about so I can yeah. sort of play with that space a little more. Uh, the, the other thing that I kind of look for are ways to flesh out your character a little more and like make them relate to other people. Like there, there's that trope of like you all meet in a tavern and then then go on a road trip together, and that sounds like a, that sounds like a nightmare to me. Like mm -hmm. like like going I keep on, saying that I'm yeah. like maybe this is my experience as a woman, but like I am mm -hmm. not going anywhere with people I met in a bar, especially if they're carrying yeah. swords. Uh huh. Yeah. Like <laughs> like red flags. Like no. Like, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But like like give me something that like fills in the backstory a little bit or like creates ties with these other people. So like, mm. it's not that you just sprung fully formed into existence, but like yeah. you, you have a bit of past and like people yeah. who know you. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've been like, that was not something that I had experienced all that much before we started making this podcast. Um, like the games that I played didn't have a lot of those like connective questions. And I think our masks one was the first one that I really yeah. experienced mm. that like sort of interaction. Um, because before that we had, we kind of made it up ourselves in the mm -hmm. games that I played. Like we, we tried to do more than just meeting in a tavern or like mm -hmm. taking a job together. Um, but it wasn't codified like that. And, yeah. um, the moment that we had that in that first, like masks one that we did, I was like, Oh, why are we not all doing this? Why I know, is this right? not, why, why more mm -hmm. of this please? <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot of games that we've actually covered that don't have this, uh, relationship mechanic in it that I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the character creation right. process, but right. it's always felt like it's missed just that one little thing to, mm -hmm. to really tie everything together. Yeah. yeah. The, Cause there's always that expectation in games. Like you're all going to be working together towards a similar goal or like mm -hmm. at least doing the same things. Yeah. So there, there should be a reason like beyond that goal, why your, your people know and interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Like I don't talk with my coworkers or go out with them or anything, like largely because I don't go into the office anymore, but right. you know, at, the, at the same time, I don't necessarily think that I would like, just because we all have the same job doesn't make us friends. Yeah. Right. Right. But with, 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 with role-playing games, you can, you know, come up with ways that you are friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, you expect that you're all doing the same thing. Like I go into a game session being like, okay, we as a group are going to do something, not Amelia's character is going to do a thing. And then mm -hmm. Ryan's character will do a thing. Like it's not, you know, we aren't all having like our own separate storylines. We're doing mm -hmm. the thing together. And so yep. I feel like games know that we as players yeah. know that. Why are we not doing that? Yep. I don't know. It's no, it's good. I, I much. And I think that that was the moment that we got most excited when we were doing mm -hmm. our our creation stuff was when we started asking those questions of each other and being like, oh, yeah. you know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the moment uh, where we I mean, we were excited all along, obviously. Yeah. But like that was the moment we were like, this is it. This mm. is this is the Christmas movie moment. It, it ties yes. everything together. <laughs> <laughs> it put a bow on it. Yeah. <laughs> So how do we think that character creation in this game stacks up 
with other systems that we've played. Obviously, it does have some of that playbook kind of feel of a lot of the PDTA yeah. games we've covered. It is mm-hmm. the first you know, belonging outside belonging game that we've done. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, what are what are our thoughts? So the, the thing that I thought of was your little like half episode with the Heartbeats game from the, the Ultimate Micro RPG Guide. Mm-hmm. Be, because it kind of like it's that melodrama slice of life thing where it's it's recreating a very specific genre of media. Yeah, that is like it's heightened reality. Mm-hmm. Like you're you're doing kind of everyday normal things, but it's all much more dramatic and sped up than mm. it normally would be. And you're talking about it in the language of those tropes, too, mm-hmm. because I know when we did that one, too, there was a, a little bit of a like, yeah, but at this point we're in season seven and we've had a yeah. will they won't they for three seasons uh, now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, talking about it in terms of other media that we know, which is a thing that this game does really well and obviously is, is meant to do is sort of like yeah. recreate those tropes. Um, but but we found ourselves using that kind of language around yeah. it, too. Mm-hmm. Um and I, I really liked that, that it gave us those touchstones that like this sort of shared language around it before we had even looked mm-hmm. at this game. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was really easy to to kind of pick everything once you once you got down to the role as well, mm-hmm. uh, because especially like once we created our small town and mm-hmm. everything, it was uh, everything just kind of came uh, a bit naturally. And, uh, you know, I, I almost had no idea what my character was going to be until like we're like, OK, bees are super important. Wind farms <laughs> right. happening. Uh-huh. Wind farms disrupt bees. All right. I got my character concept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't look at this game at all before we started recording. Like I didn't flip through and like look at what the choices were for playbooks or anything like that. But it was like we had made our town and then I was like, OK, event planner, because I, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And by the time we had done those two things, it was like everything just fell into place by itself. I don't yeah. think there were very many moments where any of us really had to pause and think about stuff. You know, people yeah. don't really ever hear that on the final recording because we cut all of that anyway, where we kind of hem and haw about what mm. we're going to pick. Mm. But I don't think that we really had a whole lot of that. It was just like, nope, this is what I'm going to do. I know what feels right because we've mm. already established these other things. I know what yeah. the tropes are. It's clear to me. Um, yeah. uh-huh. like, and this like was we, so we, smooth. Yeah. <laughs> Like we, we even we found ways to like bring in the map stuff like which existed before we made people to like to make those matter in in unexpected ways. Mm-hmm. Like like the wind farm was like could have just been a weird side detail. But like in combination with the bees like that led to to my character concept and Ryan's character concept and mm-hmm. like the coming up with the event put uh, 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 Barry Bell into play. And it's it, right. it all just sort of like pointed us in good directions yeah well, and then like you know ryan's like object that he carries around became like the whole center of what the plot is here yeah. of like mm-hmm. trying to get people together and then we came up with that event and it was like well obviously the event is the thing that gets them together because now that's mm-hmm. important and it just yeah. like it all like i said it all just like fell into place really easily yeah. and i yeah. loved it was extremely satisfying mm-hmm. which is you know what we wanted out of like a fun kind of comfort game yeah. anyway it's like mm-hmm. it just feels like oh this this was correct <laughs> it was correct <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> in every way yeah <laughs> so how does the process of character creation reinforce the feel of this game and set expectations for play mm-hmm. so uh i think the like the town creation part before making characters is uh, kind of setting you up for like, it, it starts you out collaborating and sharing ideas and creating something together. Mm. And like that basically kind of like primes you to, to keep doing that through the rest of the game is, you know, mm. you're, you're going to be listening for what other people's ideas are. You're going to try to find connections between each other or the things that you've made up. And, you know, it it sort of lets you dip your toes into the world a little bit and like finding what is important to you in there. I think it's really important for a GM-less game to start with something like that where everybody's collaborating because it sort of reminds Mm. you that nobody is showing up with a story for you, that you are already from go doing this thing together. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And... I think with the the playbook selection itself, it's interesting because each 
you know, each one has its own kind of built in story arc to it. So Mm -hmm. like by picking a playbook, you're you're basically saying what kind of story you want to tell. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, we you know, we say like, here are all the things we pick together. Like what kind of story are we going to tell with these people? Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, in a a bad way either. Like part of the the joy of Christmas movies is going in, knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. And then it's just, you know, you actually make that happen and you, you, you find the little joys in the unexpected moments. Yeah. I think that that's a thing that I I love about. um, I think that the fact that you picked this system for telling these kinds of stories, I think it fits so Mm -hmm. perfectly because it's you're really saying like here's the kind of story that I want to tell I know what what I want this like ending to be I know but like let's figure out how we get there like Mm -hmm. what does that look like along the way um it's very much like play Mm -hmm. to find out but it's Mm -hmm. not find out what the ending is because the ending is they kiss and everyone's happy and they save Christmas Mm -hmm. yeah um but the ending like to play a how do we how do we get there how do you go from Mm -hmm. being like big city real estate jerk to like you know falling in love at a honey tap festival in mm-hmm. Gulp and um, oh, yeah. and I I just love like the sort of comfort of that kind of storytelling of like mm-hmm. I know what's gonna happen and I know but I, I like I just want to I want to see the joy along the way yeah uh I, as I was making this game like the Dream Askew, Dream Apart, like the original Belonging Outside Belonging games, the the book includes a section on like making your own games, Mm -hmm. which, you know, is kind of helpful. But the the thing that I found most striking is how much that book dedicates towards establishing a a tone of play at the table. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just like here are the rules, go make a story. It's like make sure everybody is comfortable, like it includes recipes to like cook for the people you're playing or like tells you to bring snacks. It's, Mm -hmm. it's very, it tells you like, it's not just a way of playing a game. It's sort of like a new way of interacting as people. Like, yeah, it's about the experience, not just the game happening at the table. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're, you're not just people playing a game together. You're friends who have like agreed to set aside a few hours out of your busy schedule to make something together. Mm-hmm. And and that should, you know, involve comfort and care and like looking after each other and also snacks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that this game um, fits that really well. I think that it really, um, at least for me, like what I've seen of it so far, which obviously again is like not much, but it really does hit that mm-hmm. tone. I mm-hmm. think that you you did a good job here. You really did. Absolutely. Thank you. One of the questions we ask is looking at the character sheets and seeing how that tells us about the game. Um, I actually want to talk about like the kinds of like roles and playbooks that you Mm -hmm. picked here. Um, You know, why are these ones the ones that you picked? Are there some that you um, specifically like decided not to pick? Are there, Mm -hmm. um, you know, because there's lots of Christmas movies. There's lots of like, how did you distill it down to these particular ones? Mm hmm. So there there is kind of a a theory of like playbook design that I think I think J Dragon came up with where like the the first two playbooks you create kind of exist in like opposite poles of of a story and then you know the third one kind of like is in contrast to those and that felt like a very natural way of creating things for a Christmas movie because mm-hmm. you have that that big city small town dynamic like mm-hmm. one playbook has to be the person from the big city who you know needs to learn what love is and you know another <laughs> playbook has to be like the person from the small town who like works really hard and solves people's problems but maybe doesn't have their own stuff in order mm-hmm. and you know the, having those kind of like the the two ends of the scale there are, you know, certain other things like everything else is going to fall in between those in some way or in some cases go off in completely different directions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like some some of them are just straight up Christmas movie tropes. Like there's a playbook who is the child who is all about like innocence and, you know, learning generosity. Uh, mm-hmm. There's 
a playbook that I, I call definitely not Santa winky face. <laughs> I did see I like that, that one. I strongly considered yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's just sort of like the the vaguely supernatural person who like says uh, like cryptic statements about generosity. Like th- there's a couple movies where you see a person who's like clearly played by the same actor, but they're like in a completely different role. And, you, and you know, you as the audience say is like, wait, I know there's something up with that guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so that's. You know, that's another uh, the kind of weird uh, playbooks, but every, everything else is kind of it's built upon uh, a particular trope, uh, even if it's, you know, just from a single movie that I saw that I, I felt could like carry a story on its own or mm-hmm. like, you know, with or support someone else's story, because, you know, th- there are playbooks like Definitely Not Santa, who who is more of a support role, but I mean, sometimes it can just be fun to be a a, a weirdo giving out uh, cryptic advice to people. Yeah. 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 No, I saw the one in there was like, you know, royalty or yeah, the secret, like secret royalty. royalty. Mm-hmm. Um, so are there any that you like thought about putting in but didn't or like, you know, can't find a way to like sneak in or something like that? Yeah. Um. So one I had kind of toyed with was a best friend figure mm-hmm. like that. That's always the, the classic trope of like being the, the main character's best friend who like, you know, gives them advice. And mm. I, I don't think there was enough there to build a whole playbook out of. Yeah. Like it's definitely a, a support kind of character, like, like a, a child or a definitely not Santa, but like I couldn't find an arc for them like mm-hmm. do do you become a main character and like is is, fi- is your story going to be like finding your own story yeah and yeah and that, that's a lot of a lot of the meta. best friend tropes in those movies are they're they don't change much yeah right usually. they already had it figured out and why couldn't their friend have it figured out too like they knew yeah. all along they belong together yeah, yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah yeah. But I think there's also no reason that you can't play any of those other things as a best friend if you want right. to. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. not sort of an exclusive. But you're right. It does feel like a thing that like it's kind of weird that it's not there, but like mechanically difficult mm-hmm. to put in there. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the, the best friend could just be a, a side character, like like through the setting elements or like actually the, the 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 big city big shot has the move. Call your best friend back in the city for advice like mm. that. That gives you a, a best friend that you can call, you know, they they come in, do their serve their story purpose and they, they don't need to be an entire person. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in this system? And what do you think is one of the best parts? Um, so I have the the same answer for both of those questions. <laughs> yep, is, lots of people do. <laughs> yeah, like like this game definitely reflects my experience as a story gamer. Like I I play a lot of uh, GM lists or rules light things, mm-hmm. and so I trust a lot in the the other players to like make the choices matter to them. You know, uh, a lot of like PBTA or belonging outside belonging games, they they give you these lists that are like really flavorful things like this is the the torn cloak of your former mentor who you swore swore to avenge. And like, I don't want to like lock somebody into a particular mood with something Mm -hmm. like that, Mm -hmm. like. I, I give you sort of vague items and, and trust that you know what to do with them or you find a way to make them important without necessarily telling you how to do that or like making that choice for you. Right. And, you know, so that that's the flip side is I, I give you some guidance, not a lot, but at the same time, that lack of guidance gives you freedom to make the game your own. Like all, all these playbooks are tropes, but the the particular flavor that you bring to it is what makes it special, not what I give you. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Okay, are we ready for the fun part? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) we've been doing this one. I know, I said before, I'm like, I don't know how we're going to do it, but it's time for our fan fiction. Okay, so Uh, Dr. Rick has to help the bees. I have to help the bees. He's a bee doctor, a bee veterinarian. I'm a bee doctor, yep. 
Um, I didn't go to B doctor school yeah. for nothing. Okay, I, so you I came mean, back to this. I guess let's start there. Like you came yeah, yeah. back to this town because you, what did you know why you came back? Um, I think I knew that. Um, like, oh goodness, because we set up a weird paradox, didn't we? Like Time we set up that to you. I know we set up this weird yeah. paradox of like, um, I need to get you two together, mm-hmm. and also the the wind farms are going to be disrupting the bees. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe I, you maybe, really yeah. just made this tough. Yeah, I, maybe that's just the tightrope your character has to walk. Like, make sure my parents still get together, but also make sure the wind farm doesn't happen. Because we set up that thing between Summer and Maribel, like the town does need infrastructure and Summer yeah. can help with that, but maybe just not the wind farm. Yeah, mm-hmm. or, or, or like I said before, the wind farm could exist, but just not in the same location. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe if it what was on the other side. What we actually need is nuclear power because of the <laughs> way better. Clean, safe, Sol- nuclear solar. power. We could just go solar. Uh, that, that's got really I don't really know. The amount of energy that goes into building solar panels versus the amount that they can hold. And mm-hmm. anyway, continue. <laughs> continue. It's cheaper than coal. I'm just saying. Um, Anyway, no, I'm thinking uh, like maybe because you two have this potential deal of like that that could be going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe that maybe I can help sway that to to move the location of the wind farm or something. So it's not disrupting the water flow to the pond Mm -hmm. uh, slash lake uh, Goldpind. And. So that way we can we can keep the the lake ecosystem good, Mm -hmm. which keeps the local bee population happy. So all the flowers and stuff around the lake. And I can talk to Summer as someone who like also understands city things, because obviously no one around here understands you and what you're about. But Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, I also know city things and city words and real estate do yeah, I, I am I the one that introduces you two to get that conversation started? Mm-hmm. Like, like maybe you knew of each other before in the big city, but right. yeah. since you've you've come to the small town summer, like maybe you're just too busy, too focused on the wind farm stuff that you didn't you, you're not even rec- you're not, not looking anybody in the eyes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and now you're stuck here because it snowed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so now maybe you introduce us as like, hey, here's another person that also like, you know, isn't from this backward small town. Right. You know, not mm. entirely. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But I also like see the value that this town has because I'm from here. So like I understand that it really isn't that backward. Yeah. Ooh, what what if like in the future that Rick comes from, uh, you know, Summer and Mary Bell got together, but they left for the big city, leaving the town behind. Mm-hmm. So Rick comes from a future where, you know, we're still his parents, but like Rick really cares about the small town. And oh. I and I, I took us out of that situation. So so your goal is to like get Summer to care about this small town in a way that'll like fix oh. that fix that problem but still like, it'll keep solve us the together. wind farm issue yeah yeah, but, but yeah. Still, still set up your parents in a different scenario Ooh, i like that yeah to like to like to like show the charm of this small town and and the charm that the festival has and so like the importance of the event planning for this festival yes. is already skyrocketed because you're planning for your future meet cute uh-huh mm-hmm. Like unknowingly, yeah. yeah. So I've I've got to like drop subliminal hints or something of like mm-hmm. stuff to do. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Ugh. Oh, I I also like mm-hmm. the idea of like my my memory like slowly changes and has like yeah. like oh. I've got I've got dual memories for a short period of time as things change in yes. the. In my past, the the present of the movie, mm-hmm. um, which I think would be a really interesting like I can see things going worse. I can see like 
my parents yeah. not being together at, like at the midpoint yeah. of the, the movie Ooh. like the meat the meat the meat cute doesn't go well and like your left arm starts to fade away it's like no i'm <laughs> never gonna be adopted <laughs> <laughs> Because that's how that works. Right. Because you right. fade away entirely as a person if you don't get adopted. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Chris, Christmas movie logic. Does right. need to right. make sense? <laughs> yeah. My hair is not nearly as perfect in, in mm-hmm. those scenes. Right. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have to plan this perfect meet cute of, you know, this, this honey festival. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, it, and it all culminates with the honey kiss. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. What a good Christmas it, movie. What mm-hmm. a good... Movie name, The Honey Kiss. The Honey, honey Kiss. Mm, the oh. Honey Kiss. Like Chris, okay. Christmas Honey Kiss. Mm-hmm. Christmas Honey Kiss. Yeah. If, you can take, if you take Christmas out and the movie still works, it's not a Christmas movie. Right, so. right, 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 right. <laughs> oh, yep. Oh, that's amazing. And then obviously oh. there's the scene where I have to teach you how to ice skate. Because yeah. you don't know that because you're from the city. Uh-huh. <laughs> where there, there are notably no ice rinks in there's the city. There's no ice rinks in the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> I say I, having like the only place I've ever been ice skating is the Pettit National Ice Center, which is where the U.S. Olympic team practices uh-huh. because that's here in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Only place I've ever gone ice skating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and I, I love the thought of uh, like Rick having the knowledge of both of you from your past having told him uh, mm-hmm. growing up and like using that knowledge like oh maribel really likes you know this sort of flower um yeah or 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 you know summer oh. is is really great about this and like having this dropping these hints and stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I, I think I, I want a scene where air quotes dr rick has to perform some kind of like b medical surgery? yeah oh like <laughs> like one of the queens is sick Yes. <gasps> oh no, and it could ruin the festival. Yeah. It could ruin the festival. It could ruin the hive. It could ruin Wait. everything. But uh-huh. you don't actually know anything about bees. Yeah. Well, so I know a lot about bees, Google but not it about on our me. really slow computers in the internet oh. cafe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you you just got like the, the little bee on the, the tiny metal pen and a very <laughs> tiny scalpel hole and yeah, <laughs> I, I just want the scene uh, from uh, what was it? Star Trek four. I believe it was the movie where uh, they go back in time hi- trying to find a whale to bring uh-huh. back to the future. Um, and Scotty is just yelling at the mouse because uh, <laughs> like he yes. only knows how to interface with computers with his yeah. voice. Like like you're like you're swiping your hand over the computer like, doctor, what are you doing? This bee needs help. <laughs> I'm searching for answers. <laughs> well, we all are, but the bee right now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is so good. A rare condition. A rare condition. Mm. So, suffering from yeah. a broken heart. <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> um, great. Excellent. Yes. Amazing. Just perfect. Normally we talk about advancement here. So we mm. will we will chit chat a little bit so that we can get our yeah. our sound cue in here and take it up a level. Hooray. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. Yay. Um, but we did talk about earlier that this is mostly meant to be like a one shot, maybe two. Uh-huh. Um, but we we do like to talk about character growth. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. When you start out as Summer, the boss from the big city, um, what is your what is your character growth look like? How does that happen in mm-hmm. game? Yeah. Um, so the the boss playbook is kind of built around like finding the heart that you've buried and learning to use the the money and influence you have for other people's benefit. Mm-hmm. So I I think that is probably going to happen you know, over the course of our story through you know Rick's in- intense efforts of like continuing to put Summer and Mary Bell together in different situations like. You know, Mary Bell kind of talking to Summer in a way that she understands. Like, mm. yeah, like I've I've been to this city. Like, I I'm from this small town. Like, here are the ways that these things matter and that these people matter. And you know, this you know this whole wind farm deal. It it might be like very lucrative for you in some way because it's in an alternate universe where there's a lot of money and wind power. But mm. ultimately, there are more important things here. Mm-hmm. And you know. 
I like the like, idea too of like Maribel having to like convince herself of those things as she's saying that to Summer because obviously yeah. like she left like yeah. she did not want to be in this small town mm-hmm. and is already yeah. having lots of feelings about coming back and sort yeah. of being there's that weird feeling and, of like you know like in college when you go and like stay with your parents for Christmas and you're like a kid again uh, and you're like I've been living yeah. on my own for a year mm-hmm. um and so like having to kind of convince herself of those things too that like yeah. no this place really is worth it yeah and and there already is a future where Maribel did leave again with Summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- there's that double duty. Like, yeah, you you too are learning about the, the town again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like there are certain playbooks in this game that have, like, a, a bigger, like, growth story than others? Or, mm-hmm. like, that allow for that more or require mm-hmm. that more than others? Yeah. Um... So one of my my favorite playbooks, which, you know, because it it mostly does reflect my experience of like coming from a small town and going to the big city. And like you said, coming back home again, Mm -hmm. uh, it's called The Returned, you know, and and basically it's it's someone who was from the small town. But, you know, they left and came back. Um, the, The particular movie that this was drawn from was someone who like left town and became a famous musician. But Mm. the, the person that they used to be in love with, like their, their farm is struggling. And so, you know, he, he comes back on this media tour and, you know, re re, not quite reignites, but like interacts with his old flame in ways that like, Hey, there's a lot of stuff that's still between us. Like, and like you need to to like make up for the 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 truckload of trouble you left behind, and you know so the the returned playbook is all about like making amends for certain things in your past, but at the same time like owning the changes that have happened to you while you're away. Mm-hmm. Like you you stand by your decision of leaving, and but you still care about the small town as well. So it's kind of walking that line between like people who used to know you and a place that you used to know, but like finding how to navigate that dynamic while Mm. staying true to yourself. That's a really complicated. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot going on in a playbook for a game about Christmas, you know, but like, I I think that is something that I very much feel as like somebody who is, you know, even though from the suburbs, but like. Mm-hmm. Even just, like, the difference between, like, um, you know, like, I grew up in a very, like, religious family and yeah. now being out as a queer person and, like, dealing with that back and forth of, like, uh, you know, going back and, like, being the person that I'm expected to be and, you yeah. know, who I am outside of that and yeah. all of that kind of back and forth. I think a lot of us experience that, even though yeah. it's not about mm-hmm. place, but, like, mm-hmm. personality. Like, yeah, like, that. that is part of my lived experience, too, is... I probably up until I had been living in Philadelphia in Philadelphia for several years, like every time I would come home, it's like, so when are you coming back home? Or like, here's a nice place you could probably live in. Or, hey, here's a job you could work at. I'm like, no, no, I I live live here now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that's a I think for people even just like in our age group sort of, I think is a Uh thing that we're going through of that. Like, okay, we're sort of early adulthood and like our parents navigating that idea of like, no, we're, we're grownups now. Like we're not coming back, you know, Uh we're not in that. I I still have siblings that are in college at this point and they're doing that sort of like, I live, they both live at home. Um, Mm. But, you know, it's like go out during the day, go to school, have your jobs, come home at night and you're a kid again. Um, And, you know, I'm in that phase now where like obviously I have a 10 year old and everything. So like I think my parents have given up on me like coming Uh home. But for a couple of years, I lived with them again after my divorce and all that kind of stuff, too. And so that navigating that back and forth between Mm -hmm. like, you know, like I am my parents child yeah. I am a parent myself now. Like that has been mm-hmm. a really like weird swing back and forth too. There's just like a lot of complicated emotions happening. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think holidays too, especially like really exacerbate uh-huh. that where you go back to like those traditions uh-huh. of like how things have always been done and sort of expecting yeah. things to fall into place the same way that they always have. Yeah. It's like a very weird, very weird mm-hmm. feeling. And it's like yeah. an interesting space to play a game in. Mm-hmm. This was so much fun. This was so much fun. I feel like this hit like all of those beats, though. Like this hit all of that, like that feeling of like 
going and coming back and tradition and like wanting wanting things to improve but knowing they Mm -hmm. like can't and like knowing that forward and like the idea that forward movement isn't improvement always Uh um which is again like this is a lot to pack into a game about christmas (laughs) right yeah like you that, put a that's lot kind in of, here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something I always include in the games I make, even the weird small ones. Is just like a tiny bit of thing that if you drag out a little more, it's kind of sad. Yeah, well, life is like that, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you have anything else that you want people to know about this game? Um. Well, I mean, I know we did kind of like d- we did we did discuss that like character advancement in the story is narrative but like i i want to reiterate that that is part of the belonging outside belonging system mm-hmm. is that there there aren't there isn't any xp for you to gain there aren't any stats to increase and like everything about your character is there from the start so advancing is strictly narrative like yeah it, it's mm-hmm. not just that my game is made for short-term play it's like belonging outside belonging itself is like it knows what it wants to focus on and it isn't like mechanically yeah. getting better. It's like, yeah. it's story, it's character getting better. Yeah. And it, it's really, it's the, the, if you want to talk mechanics, it's the only thing you really have is the tokens and mm-hmm. you, you get tokens for kind of doing things that set, set you back a little bit. And then you, you, you can spend them to, to do, you know, more, more extraordinary things for, to, to do some really cool things with the story. Yeah. Oh, I'm, this was like everything that I wanted it to be. This yeah, was just, I, I really I'm like, this. Oh, yeah. oh, this is so good. And now <laughs> I just like a minute ago texted my, my group and was like, Hey, next time we have like a week off between sessions, mm-hmm. this is what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> like, I was like, and I just, one of my friends just messaged back to him was like, yes, good. Perfect. Awesome. Like, great. <laughs> Done. I, we're going to play I, this I game. I do love to hear that. Oh, like this is great. Outside of outside of a few play tests, I have not actually gotten to play mm-hmm. this game very much. So mm-hmm. I, I'm very excited to like get it out in the world, like at conventions and like other yes. people playing it and just he- oh, yeah. hearing what people will come up with. Yeah, I really hope that your stuff at PAX goes well, because I think that like oh, this is like a perfect time of year for this. This is uh-huh. absolutely this is great. This is great. I had mm-hmm. so much fun with this, Danny. This was like, this was fantastic. <laughs> this was so good. Oh, this was so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Danny, thank you so much for joining us to talk about A Christmas Belonging. I had a lot of fun as well. Yes, thank you for having me. Can you uh, remind everyone where they can find you online and what sort of things you're working on? Sure. Um, right now, I am working on... At any at any given time, like any game designer, I have a, a text file full of game ideas that are half baked and some occasionally make it out into the world. And when they do, you can find them at Danny makes RPGs dot itch dot IO. You can follow me on Twitter at Danny plays RPGs and you can listen to my world building podcast powered by Wikipedia pod of wonder at pod of wonder or wherever podcasts are found. All right. Well, thank you again for sitting down with us. This was so much fun. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. I really love the possibilities with this game. Uh, I I know on our Discord, a friend of the show, Kevin, pointed out how the, the sequel to The Honey Kiss could be Rick trying to set up his moms uh, to adopt himself as a baby. Oh uh, man, this yeah. puts a lot of pressure on Rick. I know. <laughs> like, this whole story has put a lot of pressure on Rick. Like, <laughs> Rick, if you want to exist, you need to put in the work. <laughs> I know. Well, he, I, I think he'll exist either way. It's just he might not have the right moms or or, mm. or any something. Who knows? So yeah. uh, he's he's got to get the right family so he can have that, that wonderful home style, like family life in, in uh, gosh, uh, Goldpund. Gold, Goldpund. <laughs> Lake Goldpund. Goldpund. Lake Goldpund. Uh, with the with the upgraded cyber cafe. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, that would be such a fun sequel, though. That like, would be. The, goodness. I, I'm I know, very... I think this is like, this game has offered so many sequel options that, like, I yeah. also would love to play through. And, like, yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah. I'm very sad that this will never be on screen. I know. Um, I keep thinking that every time, like, we come back to talk about this, it's like yeah. my first thought is, "What? 
I've seen way worse movies. Mm -hmm. And like, come yeah. on. Who doesn't want a good time travel, like queer romance, uh, bear themed, bear -themed parent yeah. trap? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that has all of the keywords to hit, like, em every demographic, right? It's like, Hallmark Christmas movie, kind of queer, tons of bear puns for the dads. Yeah. You know, like, parent and, trap. And time travel. Time travel. Like, gosh. gosh, it's something for everyone. Something for everybody, seriously. <laughs> uh, I I would write this if, uh, if I were paid to. Absolutely. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but before we let you go, uh, we do have some calls to action today. Uh, please don't forget about the Waukesha Foundation Community Fund that we talked about last week um, to help benefit uh, the victims and families of the uh, tragedy in Waukesha at their mm -hmm. Christmas parade. Um, we will put a link in the show notes again if you're able to give. It would definitely help a lot of families this season. Absolutely. Um, also, check out the Audioverse Awards final voting for this 2021 awards season. Uh, a Horror Borealis Presents Losers a Love Story, Campaign Skyjacks, and Courier's Call are all up for awards. And it'd really mean the world to me personally if uh, Losers won the best new improvised production because, uh, you know, that's the all around award for the category. And everyone that worked on the show made it so phenomenal and uh, such you a did some of the such production? a personal journey. Yeah, and I did and I did the the audio production for it, which was great. So it'd be cool um, if it won production um, because Ryan would. did the production. Everyone, he's not going to say it, but Ryan did the production, and he would <laughs> like it to win production. He's going to talk about how everybody deserves to win, and it feels really good. But everyone, Ryan did the production, and he deserves to win production. <laughs> hey, no. <laughs> it's, it's very good. Um, like the the show is just phenomenal. If you haven't heard it, uh, I highly encourage you to go listen. If you're not, um, you know, easily spooked, um, but yeah, it's it's so good. Uh, one last thing to take care of before we sound off the year. Sound off for the year. There we go. I can read. We can mm -hmm. sound off the year. Sound off for the year. Either way. <laughs> uh, new review. New just review. in time. Hey. Uh, this one comes from Tacit Croquet. I really hope that's how you say it. Um, that's how I'm going to say it. Via Apple Podcasts in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. It's titled, Such a Delight. Yeah. Hosts are so wholesome and have great chemistry together. I love their enthusiasm for the games their guests talk about. Listens like a friend podcast for TTRPG nerds. P.S. The Christmas one is my favorite by far. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been one of my favorites, too. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly, A Christmas Belonging is like the current game I won't shut up about. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> recently somebody asked for a game to play with their friends, like over the kind of Christmas period. Yeah. And I was immediately like, a Christmas belonging and then they were like but not something Christmas themed and I was like too bad <laughs> too bad <laughs> like, too bad you're getting this I was like I guess if you want here's a couple other things too you could play but, <laughs> but this is the one <laughs> but this one do it <laughs> do it <laughs> um yes this is <laughs> one of my favorites by far as mm -hmm. well yeah well um, th thank you so much for the the review uh the, uh reviews like this really make us uh super happy to hear and uh, I'm glad. I'm really glad that this series is uh, somebody's favorite as well. That that's really nice to hear. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say too um, that you know if anybody's looking for like a Christmas gift because they're like, oh, I, you know, my favorite podcast host. It's just so hard to buy for every year. Um, you know, <laughs> they're like my best friends, but you know, I just don't know what to get them. Uh, consider a review. A review. You a say. review is, yeah, it's a delightful gift. Mm. Um, it doesn't have to be wrapped. It's very small, so you don't have to worry about whether it will fit in our homes or fit with our decor mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, and we just love them, yeah. honestly. Can't get enough of them. You can Can't never have there. too many. So, like, don't worry. Like, oh, they, you know what? They probably already have 100 reviews. No, you know what? You can never have too many. Can never have too many. We so, have yeah. enough reviews for the past, but we'd love more reviews for the future. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. if you were thinking, gosh, what would Amelia and Ryan love for Christmas? Reviews. Exactly. <laughs> well, one last thing before we completely sign off for the year and I'll let you get to the outtakes. Um, 2021. Woo. Yeah. What a year, huh? Oof. Yeah. Uh, 
a lot's happened. Yes. Like, we both moved this year. We did. That's we wild did. to think about. We did both move this year. That was actually all this year. <laughs> that was pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about it. I was like, yeah, I mean, like, Ryan moved. And I was like, oh, my God, I moved, too. Oh, that was like a lifetime ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was. It was the beginning of the year, but. Yeah, um, and mine was, like, six weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, mine's mine's fresh. Yep. I've got I've got new home smell. Yeah, that good new home smell. <laughs> yeah, I've got. <laughs> mine does not smell like a new home right now. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, but yeah, the, we we did a lot of series this uh, this year. We did eleven series, right? I think so. Because we took November off, mm-hmm. um, so we did eleven series. We got one cooked and uh, ready to go for January, mm-hmm. um, and and we covered a lot of really great games. Um, we did, we did. And I, I I'm really happy that we got to cover two holiday themed games. Yeah, we got our timing right this year. I mean, only just barely for October, I admittedly, know. like only just barely. And, you know, because life was a lot, like I just had a couple of surgeries. You were getting ready to do the move thing. Yeah. Um, but we did it. Um, it's yeah, I, I loved a lot of the games that we covered this year. Mm-hmm. I think we really I, I feel like this year we kind of grew a lot as as hosts. We kind of really came into yeah. our own and like settled into some of those things that like have become our thing. Yeah. Um. There are a number of things we stopped, like, pretending we were not going to be necromancers and magical girls. And I think we've had a lot of fun with that. And we did. That's been Uh, a lot of value to just, like, being our worst, best selves. (laughs) It's it's fine to to lean into your uh, nonsense every now and then. Or or all the time. All the time. All the time. (laughs) 100% of the time. Yeah. And and, uh, this year, Tracy Barnett uh, came on the network as kind of... uh, uh, an organizer uh, of sorts for like Patreon content and and a bunch mm-hmm. of other stuff and and they met with us um, earlier this year and really lit a fire under our uh, feet for like uh, having uh, uh, kind of bringing the passion back. Yeah, I guess you yeah. Could I say. mean, I think you know it's like we've never not enjoyed making this show, right? You know, because we I, we wouldn't do it. Um, but there definitely was a level of like kind of suckness it was, it was always think, it was like on a verge of burnout i would say right, I mean, right and i think you know and a lot of that was just like the state of the world and like yeah. you know existing is such a burden at this point that like trying to make a creative show and trying to like bring something like passionate and fiery and new and exciting every single time mm-hmm. um starts to wear on you and it's just to be like yeah. you know i like I can't get dressed every day. You can't expect me to like make some kind of art. I know. But, um, you know, I, yeah, talking to Tracy, I think really lit a fire. Um, yeah. It kind of reminded us of like the things that we had originally wanted to do with the show or mm-hmm. that like we had thought about but really couldn't make happen or couldn't figure out how to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like I'm really, really excited to have Tracy on board as a resource for us to be able to kind of um, sit down and talk some of that stuff out with because it's really nice to have a person to just like get on a call with and say like okay here's here's what I'm thinking like Mm -hmm. how does this go from idea to thing exactly Um, you know and that's I think helped us that's been part of the reason that we decided to finally like get our website together and start working on that which like you know is one of those things that like we could have done and should have done and all that kind of stuff but does it is It is work. It is work. Um, And so, you know, finding the energy to do some of those things. Um, And so I'm kind of excited for some stuff that, like, we have percolating. Um, Yeah. And, you know, I think in any other state of the world, we probably would have been, like, off and running with by this point. Yeah. Like, we would have been like, okay, let's do it. And now we're like, okay, let's kind of figure out, like, how to do it and then mm. like where we're going to find that reserve energy to do it and yeah, exactly. then, you know it's a slower process but exactly um, yeah i'm still that, really excited for what's to come yeah especially with all the life stuff that we had going on um like it was hard to work around that even when we had the the energy and the drive to to do more mm-hmm. um and i, I know uh, for instance some of the things we've got cooking in our noodles is uh uh bringing back the the friday forge uh, mm-hmm. for for the community to create characters together and then figure out how they all blend together and what that world looks like. I, I thought that was super fun when it was like, you know, in its heyday up and running fully mm-hmm. uh, with like dozens of people contributing. 
Uh, that was really cool. Uh, but now that we are kind of at a point of being able to get more organized, um, mm -hmm. is something that both myself and Amelia can work on instead yeah. of just me trying to kind of like fret over it while right. also well, doing other stuff. Well, now that I'm working stuff. from home, I have a computer that I can do that on. Yeah, exactly. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it's like that was not the kind of thing that I could just, do. you know, like it was too much to try and do on my phone at my office desk. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, so now I'm working from home. I have a little more mm -hmm. wiggle room on that kind of stuff. Yeah, so we're figuring out the logistics. We've got some, like, stuff for the website that we're working on, and it's, like, partially up and running at this point. But there's a, mm -hmm. there's a lot in our backlog. We've got almost four years of backlog. And, yeah, to uh, like put in there. Yeah, entering the games and stuff. It's like each game. Yeah. Okay, like, you yep. know, that's where on episode we just finished recording Series 46. Series 46. Um, that's right so around that's the like a lot of games. You know, one of those Series 19 was three different games. Yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we'd like to do that. The panel, our character, random characters panel at some point, try and find yep. a way to do that over Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, we want to, uh, you know, ideally, I think, um, get back to our character evolution cast. We love to doing oh, those, yeah. but they are significantly more work to it's put together. So much more work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we'd like to get back to, um, when we're kind of feeling up, with, up to it. I think mm -hmm. we're so many years into this pandemic. I think I'm finally at the point where I've stopped feeling bad about not being able to do those things. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, it'll get, we'll get there. We'll get, we'll there. get there. You know, like the first year was like, oh God, I can't do it. The second year was, I feel so bad. I can't do it. And now the yeah. third year we're like, mm, I can't do it. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> so <laughs> we've reached that phase of radical acceptance that exactly. my, therapist, my therapist keeps talking to me about. So <laughs> here it is, Deb. I did it. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> if you're listening, you're probably not. It would be weird if you were. <laughs> uh, you, I mean, why are you this far well. into the episode? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you didn't it's just fine. like do a little bit. It's fine. Uh, listen to the whole thing. You'll get yeah. you'll glean some good, uh, good psychological um, profiling. No, I mean she already on her own brought up my penchant for color coded outlines. That's true. So I was like, you don't need to listen to my podcast to know that about me. So that's very true. It's my my world reputation is color coded outlines. Apparently, so. Well, here's looking forward to 2022. Yep. Um We've got uh, three twos in the year, so that means it's going to be uh, twice as nice three times. Oh, is that uh, what it means? I, I don't what know. What is this? So January 3rd, 2nd or 3rd or whatever, right? It was our, like, idea anniversary. Yep, January 3rd. Okay, so what is is this year? Four years? Five years? Um, this will be, it was 2017. Was it um, really? So it'll be the start of year five. Holy moly. Was it really? I thought it was 2018. Maybe it was 2018. It was 2018. <laughs> it was it was after my first Acadicon, which was 2017. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so it had to, January 2018. So, so it had to have been January 2018. So it's the start of our fifth year, um, the wow. end of our fourth year. No, 2018. The beginning of our fourth year. I don't know. Time is weird. Math is hard. And you know what? It's it's Sunday, and we're recording this. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty late. It's dark outside. It's true. So I can't it's math true. right now. Right. Ryan did spend most of his day making cookies. I did. I spent all of day yesterday making cookies. We made a uh, lot doing, of cookies. You know, Andrew Family Cookie Day. Or like a reduced version. We only made five kinds this year. So it was kind of sad. It was like only covered two mm -hmm. tables instead of like five. Um, so a reduced version. But I did want to put uh, in our show notes, um, I'm going to type up my favorite Christmas cookie recipe which is for gingerbread cookies. And I know there are lots of gingerbread cookies out there, but this recipe is from the 1968 uh, free Wisconsin Electric <laughs> Christmas cookie book where cookie is spelled C-O-O-K-Y. Oh, wow. Cookie book. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so I will type that up. We'll put a link to that in the show notes in case anybody would like to try my favorite Christmas cookie mm -hmm. that tastes very much like molasses. Yeah, and I'm going to put up uh, a recipe to my favorite frosting uh, that Ooh. I use for my cutout cookies uh, uh, almost exclusively. Oh, and cake, I think, sometimes. Um, <gasps> and then you could put that frosting on my cookies. You could. Oh! <gasps> <gasps> It would be like the perfect Amelia and Ryan cookie. Oh, it could be. Oh, I hope oh, someone makes it. That I hope really somebody good. makes it. If somebody <laughs> makes it, take some pictures, throw it up on Twitter mm -hmm. and tag us. Yes, uh, please. Because that'll, that'll make us really happy. It really would. Um, it really I, would. 
I think I did the math correctly, and uh, 2018 was four <laughs> so years <honest>. prior <laughs> to 2022. So therefore, uh, it's the start of the fifth year after January 3rd. Okay, so all of 2018, all of 2019, all of 2020, 2021. Yep. So 2022 starts the fifth year. Okay. Correct. Got it. Got it. Yeah. That's very exciting for us. I know. Happy five years. Happy five years. Um, I'm very excited. I think we've we've come a long way, but we've got a long way to go, and I'm excited to see where it is. And I, God, I hope people are still listening at this point. I know. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Chit Chat Time uh, with Ryan and Amelia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> end of the year chat. End of the year fireside. <laughs> end of the year fireside chat. Uh, we'll yep. have a U log going. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's it for 2021, everyone. Mm -hmm. We were so glad to have you with us this year on our sometimes bumpy but always fun journey. Mm -hmm. We are looking forward to 2022 and everything we have planned. Um, we hope that you will join us for the new year and see what fun we have in store. Until then, happy holidays. Please take care of yourself. Stay safe. Drink water. Please get vaccinated. And keep making those amazing people. We will see you next year. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. 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 Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Asians Represent. Asians Represent celebrates Asian creators and diversity in the gaming community. Join hosts Agatha Chain and Daniel Kwan as they discuss gaming, genre, and representation with their guests and occasionally argue with each other to the sound of Agatha's beloved air horn app. Oh, I did it. Yeah, click. Me too. I, I'm getting, I am getting a lot of that background noise, and I don't like my waveforms. Mm. I don't like my oh, waveforms. Amelia. Do you have background bumpies? I've got too many background bumpies, Amelia. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't yell at me. This is not my fault. I know. It, well, I, I messaged my wife, and she's going to turn down the furnace and turn on the fireplace. and it'll Wow, be, it'll the things be, you mm. do for love. I know. I'd I'm be like, that's thing. great. Um, you deal with it. We live in Wisconsin. It's November. I'm not turning down my heat for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we keep it at 72 or 73 in the house. Um I don't know why. Are you nuts? It's a very... <laughs> How do you afford that? It's a very yeah. efficient furnace.
You just moved there. You don't know that. You've not gotten a bill yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's fair, too. I keep mine um, at 68. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 68. So yeah I, I couldn't survive at 68 in the winter or Oh, or I fall. can't because the furnace is in the kids' room, and the airflow is, like, not very good. So by the time it gets to my room, actually no air comes out of my vent, and I sleep with a heating pad on my feet. Yeah. Space it's heaters and cheaper, lots of blankets. Though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we're just waiting for the furnace to turn off right now. So This is now a uh, home heating cast. Mm-hmm. So welcome to the outtakes, everybody. Um, <laughs> hey, it turned off. Okay, how do I sound right. now? Well, I don't know. Talk. I'm going to talk a little bit right now, and we can oh, see yeah. how yeah. much it yeah. makes a difference. That's some solid yeah. talking there. Yeah, some now, you're, now you're all sharp edges. <laughs> all sharp edges, no <laughs> background bumpies, uh, audacities in the house. Look at that smooth waveform. Audacity's in the house, but certainly not the heat. No, <laughs> it's fine. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, I can turn on my little space heater, but that'll make noise too. So yeah. I'm just going to freeze for the craft. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to die yes. for my art. Yes. <laughs> suffer, for, suffer for podcasting. Okay. You know what I'm realizing, though, is that I feel like I meant to download this game, and I did not. Oh, she just turned off the whole... Thing. She didn't even turn down the heat. She just Dang. was like, furnace Actually, off. Actually, serious. She's like, She's it's like, recording time. It's recording time. This is serious time. Come on. <laughs> My husband has <laughs> business. <laughs> okay. So, did we, did Ryan, did you say the co- oh, no, no, no. Bang on the microphone. Oh, oh my God. We haven't recorded in forever. Um, hang on. My pop filter is in my closet. I don't have a pop filter on this right now, you guys. Oh, my God. I'm a liquid oh, amateur. <laughs> what did I sign up for? Oh, what is going on? Uh, welcome, no pop filters. Welcome to Character Creation Sick Cast, where, we're, where Ryan is sick, Amelia is non-pop filtered and unplugged. So, really... Amelia, you're both unplugged and unfiltered. Mm. I know. It's get raw. <laughs> it's just, just that raw audio. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, I always take it off to go do the stream too, because obviously the pop filter doesn't fit in the no. in the case and everything. And really... I, they make uh they make pop filters that fit right on the top of the Yeti, uh the microphone oh. portion itself. Okay, well, I'm still using yeah, the same those. technology I've been using for four know, years. But it's like a dollar. It's like this thing. It's really great. Yeah, oh, and it makes yeah. it look like a fuzzy ice cream cone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, in that case, sometimes I put a little Pikachu sock over. Yeah, I mean, that works too. I can't figure out which way to turn this, though. I can't tell if it's like making it tighter or not. I think also this we, thing. We have the same pop filter, and it's garbage. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's... Yeah, this mic supposedly has an internal pop filter, and I haven't had any problems with it. In But in, in a way, it's like, I don't have the thing in front of me, so yeah. I feel a little worried. It it sounds like it doesn't have a, uh, any pops, at mm. least. So that's nice. Good. I'm honestly not sure Just, that this one is really doing anything, other than the fact that I can see little spots on it from like where you accidentally spit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it which does, is more gross than anything. It does something when you're talking at the mic. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so now I have a pop filter on here, right. like a professional. Yeah. Um, I yeah. also have a less clacky keyboard this week. Oh, nice. So that's really exciting. I know this one has clear switches on it. Oh, um, there you go. Because my poor, sad arthritic hands could not handle the other one. And I've so. got a, I've got a cat that is very curious about my microphone right now because oh. he has free reign to inside my studio slash whatever. So I'm oh, that's right, you don't have a door now. Yeah. Ooh, um, my dog is howling because she knows that I'm here and she's not <laughs> petting her, and that's like that's a crime. I mean, it's, mm, a, crime. it's a crime. It's a war crime, probably. To the Hague. Uh huh. Do we have a Ryan? Did you save a copy of the game somewhere? Or? Um, I've uh, got it. We we have it in our email. Yeah. Yeah, uh, catch the, oh, the most okay, recent cool. version. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Yep, um, it is. It is ever ever in flux as awesome. the Christmas season is upon us. Well, oh, you yeah. gotta keep it fresh, you know. Mm-hmm. You don't want any of that outdated old timey Christmas crap. No. <laughs> all, all all the hot new trends in Christmas movies. <laughs> Because you know. <laughs> Christmas is all about keeping up with the times. There's yeah. nothing, nothing yeah. worse than old timey Christmas. Stuff. No, no, it it is an art form known for for innovation and risk taking, and oh I I need to reflect that in the game. I don't know. 
there's a plane flying behind me. I'm just going to be silent for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course there is. <laughs> just <laughs> right, right when what I say starts to matter. <laughs> so here's the question. It's like, do you live in the big city or the small town? Is that someone coming or going for your own personal Christmas movie? That's true. Uh, I'm, I'm in the big city. So uh, presumably coming in, but maybe departing. I don't think there's even an airport near me. I'm not quite sure why it's <laughs> over, this, over this area. It's an even bigger mystery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's gone now. Kid intrusion. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Yay. That voice might be too gravelly for... for oh, it is. ...your cough. <laughs> Sorry, outtakes. Oh, my gosh. This... <laughs> <laughs> we started playing Christmas Belonging with my group over the weekend. Yeah. Um, we made it through character creation and like town creation before we got too tired. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to maybe pick up next week or oh, next time fun. we have an off week or something. Um, but that was one of the things is like there's these people in the town that like run a ski resort and then there are the goat farmers and they're obviously against each other because they both want to expand and they can't because the other one's in the way. But Mm -hmm. the one thing that they agree on is that they don't want capitalists coming in from the outside and changing their town. So every year as part of their Christmas tradition, they burn a capitalist in effigy. (laughs) So we haven't decided who this year's capitalist is, but (laughs) is it like, uh, like genuinely, generally the, the monopoly man, uh, only with somebody That's else's face on I it or something. That's what I said. I was like, it's the Monopoly Man. We just burn the Monopoly Man. And they were like, no, it is a specific capitalist every year. Oh, targeted capitalism. Yeah, uh, yeah whoever's causing the problem. Like the first one was some railway baron who was trying to oh, wow. build a railroad through the through the town. It's like, yeah. it's like borderline uh, hate crime, but justified. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's you know, like Capulets and Montagues... Uh, goat farmers and ski resort people. There you go. Um, yeah, it's pretty great. But but the common ground is uh, the love of hating capitalism. Right, right. But the thing uh, the town desperately needs is an Italian restaurant. So it is possible that a big chain Italian restaurant could come in. <sighs> Olive and Garden. This is what we have to play to find out is what happens. Yeah. Uh, you and know, then we can the, LARP at the local Olive Garden. Right. That's how we're going to wrap it up. That's true. So Got to wrap it up by playing a meta game of uh, "When You're Here, Your Family" by right. uh, Jeff Stormer, mm-hmm. and uh, and play it as your characters. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Now we're going now to the real. next level. Now it's real. Now it's real. Cold open. <laughs> let's do. It. Let's do a cold we- open. Let's do a cold open now that I'm done ranting. And, you know, obviously yeah. you do not have to put all of that in there. But. Let's do a cold open <gasps> with a cold. Oh, mm. a seasonal cold open. <laughs> Excuse me. As you can tell by my coughs, which I may or may not uh, leave in the outtakes, I'm still sick. Yeah, it's just like kind weeks. of dry, though. It's like not like it's just like hanging on. Huh? It's, it's hanging like right like, in that like weird triangular like not shape. Not quite chest cold but like yeah it's like ugh. very upper lungs slash uh throat cough that makes me want to just like i don't know hot tea and lemon i don't know I don't yeah know i've do done that. that i don't know i've done i've done tea with honey and mm-hmm. like cough syrup and expectorants mm-hmm. and ugh. and uh all sorts of other fun stuff and it's it feels like it's getting better but it's just you know, it lingers and then it and then it attacks me with this like random cough here and there. Yeah. You got to rest is what you need. Yeah. I'm going to try. What a joke. Huh? Rest. What is rest. Who does that? Huh? Rest. Rest in this <laughs> capitalist society. In this economy. <laughs> <laughs> in this economy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. All right. So now now everybody knows why we're anti-capitalist uh, mm-hmm. in most of our uh, selections on this podcast. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's because I never want to have to ask people their middle names again. I know. <laughs> well, what's your middle name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's Richard. Oh, there you go. It's a nice middle name. Yeah. It's a, it's a, a family, uh, family traditional middle name for a lot of people. 
mm. on my mom's side. Nice, uh, nice. Uh, named after my uncle Dick, uh, which I think is Mine my great uncle. Grace. Mm-hmm. Um, because I am named after my grandma Amelia, and my mom felt that her name Amelia Cecilia was too much, so oh. I'm Amelia Grace. It's very close to Amelia Bedelia. Right, right. And um, people already and call me that, and I hate it. So I'm, yeah, I'm that would, glad that, would that have I'm been, not Amelia Cecilia. Yeah, that would have that would have cemented that for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fun fact: I didn't know about the Amelia Bedelia books until after I had met you. Really? Yeah, I was sheltered from that for some reason. <laughs> Sheltered. My parents were like, mm, no, Amelia Bedelia for you. Yes. She might make a great lemon meringue pie, but she does not understand how to dress a turkey. <laughs> no, she does not. <laughs> or draw the little, drapes. Or... She makes it little pants. I like no, those fa- books. Like, that's the thing is, like, I like those I like books, them. but I don't want to be called that. You know? No. Um, so. My favorite, uh, this is the last aside, uh, my favorite uh, <laughs> sure Amelia Bedelia sure. uh, thing was um, she was she had to turn out the lights or take out the lights or turn out the lights or something like that. Yeah. After she was done. And so she did. And she hung them outside and she said, huh, I guess light bulbs need to be hung outside just like babies. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like random comment that has nothing to do with the story. Go back to that, Amelia. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Take everything so literally. I know. Change the towels and she like cuts them all up. Now yep. they're different. Now yep. they're different. Oh, look at that. Okay. Aww. All right. I just want to do like a. All right. So I'll try not to laugh because that exasperates my cough. I'm sorry. I will not be funny. <laughs> okay. It's very serious. <laughs> Very serious. That's a serious business. Serious, serious podcast and business. Mm-hmm. Oh, <coughs> trying to hit that button. Is is this car alarm in the background picking up any? Yes. Yeah, I figured. Right. We can it's, wait a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't... Uh, no, it's kind of showing up on Audacity, so maybe... <laughs> I was going to say, I can hear it. I don't know how much it's getting. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it shows oh, up in no. Zoom... It's going to show up in Audacity uh, for okay. sure. Yeah, it, it did oh. stop now. So Hooray! Okay. And we can hit stop on our local recordings at this point. Stop. And we're stopping. Oh. Hey, clacky. Clicky. Don't take it backy. Interesting. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll allow it. Clicky clack. Don't take it back. Okay, I'm going to look and make sure that it's not being funky again. Yes, no funky. Do, do, do. I mean, it, it sounds fine. Yeah. I think that I'm seeing the little lines go all the way up, so. Yeah, it should be all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yup. Yup, yup, yup. 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 Yup, 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 yup. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks cool in the spectrogram, though. <laughs> uh, all right, we're going to go to Waveform. Waveform. Waveform it. Formes? Waveformes. Wait for it. Waveformes. Waveformes. Okay. Uh, great. Glad we did that. That'll, that'll go in the outtakes, I'm sure. Waveformes. Um, yeah. So I'm... I'm really happy that we're sounding better because uh, that you're sounding better, uh, that I'm sounding better. Yeah, exactly. Because, oh, my God, like uh, just editing this series is I hurting feel my so brain. Bad, like listening to this one, like I feel so bad because I'm like, it's such a good game. And I sound like, I don't know, well, like just, I was just recording really... live from prison. <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> It's yep. terrible. It's terrible. It's fine. And and I just sound like I've got, you know, cotton up my nose. I mean, um, you did. Well, not cotton. You yeah. just not, but that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not talk about that. Okay. okay. Great. <laughs> Let's not in the ring. Let's not. <laughs> it's not appropriate, Ryan. <laughs> uh, it's Sunday. It's fine. 
Um, and and uh, I am fearful because my son is getting sick again. So this is like the third or fourth time. These kids, Ryan, I continue to I say once again, (laughs) these kids. I know. Seriously. I just keep your mask on all day, even when you're eating somehow. Nothing but trouble. But see, that's the thing, though, is that like even if they did that, they would still find a way because children are always covered in stickiness and snot. Mm -hmm. Like always. Children just uh, how they are. Find a way. Just life finds a way. (laughs) (laughs) And by life, I mean germs. All right. Uh, well, should we do this? We should. All right. I'm going to give us. We've certainly been not doing it for long enough. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> um, and and my wife wants to make uh, Christmas cookies, so Ooh. we'll see. Uh, here's the countdown. Uh, for now, let's hop back into the series and see how character creation goes for this game. Enjoy the show. I really don't like hop back into. I just really want it to be a bear pun. <laughs> <laughs> Hot um, can you just say like for now, bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Thank you for uh, indulging me. Yeah, absolutely. It was necessary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to do the recap real quick because this sure. is where I would edit it. Stop, Stop it. Okay, but you do have a lot of weird noise in your background yeah. again. Yeah, my water heater started up again because my wife okay. is doing dishes. Oh, okay. Hmm. All these new things in a new house that you're going to have to figure out. I know. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is the one thing I can't control. Yeah. Like, I can't <laughs> unplug the water heater. No. No. Uh, that's just, I can't. We, we've turned off the furnace, so yes. that's not a trouble. <laughs> and the kids are kept out of the room. That's easy enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've still got a cat here, but he's just chilling. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Same. My dog has like stopped grumping. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I get rid of my children. I just like don't. Yep. Don't They're even just keep them the here. Like get mm-hmm. out, get out of here. Um, <laughs> they got mad at me because I ate their Halloween candy on my way out. Um, because oh. they decided <laughs> to keep it all at their dad's house, mm. and oh. I felt like that was extremely rude. Because what is the point of taking children trick-or-treating if you can't eat their candy? Um, And I dressed up in a costume with them and everything. You're not eating their candy. You're doing it for their health. Yeah. Well, right. Like, I'm just looking out for their tiny growing bodies, you know? Exactly. They don't need that much sugar. No. They don't So see you might way. as well. And you don't want it to go to waste. No. You're I doing society asleep. and them yeah. a favor. You, I you fell gotta, asleep you while we were hit. watching our movie last night. And Nate's like, yeah, I know. I was trying to eat your candy because we always have movie night candy. Mm-hmm. And Nate's like, I was trying to eat your candy last night. But you fell asleep on top of it, which was extremely rude of you. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> sorry, man. Now you know how it feels. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Okay. Are we ready? I, I mean, will. yeah. Or do I, you want to wait? I, I, I don't know if we can wait like a couple minutes. Sure, I can wait a couple minutes. It's usually like a five minute thing yeah. that this mm. goes on for, and then it just stops suddenly, and then it's good for like a good hour or so. Okay, I'll eat okay. these gummy sharks. Sure. Yeah, there you go. I'm still finishing um, my sixth or seventh cough drop this recording. Oof. Wow. I know you're only supposed to do one an hour, but, you know, I got to be professional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did it just, like, kind of start back up again, or? Yeah, it was, it was like, no coughing for, like, a couple of days, and it was glorious. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, Quinn starts coughing again. Ugh, that's what and it gets then, you. And then I start coughing again, and then it gets even worse, and then. I know, my kids have had colds, like, nonstop since school started again. Because we all have no immunity at all. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been, you know, like, I've always had a really good immune system between, like, my mom being a nurse. And then I work in a hospital and I had kids in school or daycare or, like, so it's like I'm just used to this stuff all the time. And now the last two years of being home and not being around anybody and, like, my kids were, did virtual school all year last year. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Nobody's had to go anywhere near anything. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Im- immune systems. They, now they it's are. like, you know. If there was only a way to, like, artificially, like, inject those sorts of, like, immune responses. You're you're describing a vaccine, Brian. You're describing vaccines. Yeah. 
they literally inject mm-hmm. you with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. If they could do that in a controlled way, so that way you don't get sick for all this time. Yeah, it's called a vaccine. Yeah, they, do. Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> <laughs> they do that. That's why you get a flu vaccine. So huh. you don't. The more you know. <laughs> yeah, there there hasn't you, been okay, a lot of vaccine uh, news lately. I could understand. What did you how think you... vaccines were? <laughs> well, I mean, just that. Do not say <laughs> microchips. Do not say microchips, Ryan. I will end this call. I am not I in charge of this think, call. I'm I will like, end this call. No. I always think when people say that stuff, I'm like, do you think that if they had that technology, that's what they would be doing with it? Yeah. Like, right. that's always the thing that right. gets me. I'm like, do you think that you, Steve Nobody, Mm. Are that interesting that that's what Bill Gates is doing with his microchips that are tiny yeah. enough to fit in? Mm-hmm. Like, that's what you thought when that he would want to already in, They're already in your phones. Yeah. Like, it's so much easier to track everybody through your phones. Yeah, than you're, you're already broadcasting your location 24-7 through your phone. Right, like, without anybody asking. To, like, yeah. you tell me what you are up to, whether I want to know or not. Mm-hmm. I don't need to inject you with a microchip to do that. Exactly. I don't know. I just want to like. I want to live in a world where I think I'm that important that that's mm, what they would nice. use that technology for. Like, I want to have that level of self esteem. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I aspire to the self esteem of a conspiracy nut crazed straight mm-hmm. white man like that. Yeah. <laughs> someday, someday, like the government is there. watching me. Like that would be so. Like to have the government watching you, like with everything that they have to do to, yeah. to take the time to watch you specifically. Right? Yep. Right? You think that you you are that important to them? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. Oh. How's your water heater, Ryan? It's still going. Oh. But I, I turned down my gain. Does it sound fine? It does. I don't hear yeah. it now. Okay. Because I'm not getting as many background bumpies now that my gain has turned down a bit. Yeah. Um, And I can I can deal, I think. I'm going to turn it down just a slight little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Do I still sound okay? Yeah, you sound fine. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep talking real close to the mic like this, and uh, get all we'll just, up on it. I'll yeah. just get right up on that mic, and uh, we'll be good. <laughs> honey, kiss okay. the mic. Yes. Oh, honey, kiss Ooh. the mic. Yep. Oh yes. Something is up with my my microphone here, though. Like my waveforms are like like it's like thick, like a really, and I didn't adjust anything other than huh. restarting my computer. Hmm. You're on the right microphone source, right? I bet I'm not. No, I am. Okay. I am. I don't hmm. understand what happened. I don't know. Hmm. But like, I mean, is it is it like thick background noises or thick just regular waveforms? No, thick background junk. Oh. Maybe it's because my heat kicked on. Oh yeah, uh, hmm. when your heat kicks on, I see that so so easily. Okay. But well, it's easy to get rid of. It's fine. I only keep my house at sixty eight. I am not turning my furnace off. It's so, fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. It just worried me for a minute because it wasn't like that in our last recording. And I didn't touch anything. And already the keyboard wasn't working <laughs> and the mute button's not working. And OK, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's great. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's great. All right. There we go. We, we did it. We did it. We can stop the recording. Mm. <laughs> last recording of the year. Of probably. the year. More than likely. We keep meaning to do our stuff and that <laughs> life is hard and this is podcasting. Oh, that sounds like a, like a nice 1990s uh, commercial jingle. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. That's <laughs> all uh, I ever wanted. We just need a nice guitar sting behind it and mm-hmm. uh, we'll be good to go. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some like unnecessary background vocals. That's true. Yeah. We'll see what I can do in post. In like Thanks. two hours. Yeah, let's or don't. <laughs> or don't. Or or maybe or spend to spend quality time with your family. Consider one. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Both are options. <laughs> they are options. Uh options are available and that's okay. Yep. Last recording of the year, probably. Of the year. We keep meaning to do other stuff and that life is hard and this is podcasting. Oh, All boy. Right. Uh, probably we'll do a five count and we can get going. Yeah, that sounds great. And by five count, I mean squeaky puppy in the background. That's fine. We'll go with sure. Right. Great. (laughs) All right. 
Call to action. Action. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we can stop this one, huh? Oof, yeah. This is up.